lot of people have asked me if, if I regret not being there for the 900. I had been on shoots with Grant, with Dave, with the sole mission of doing 900s, like for years before that. I didn't really think that much of it. Didn't think it would blow up any further than a sequence in a magazine coming out and then a month later, a better sequence comes out. I was just like, I'm cool. I got this, I got a, I got a better trick that's, that people are gonna remember forever. Well, the people at Skateboard remember that trick and the whole world remembers the 900. I never thought that doing a 900 was going to move the needle of, of skateboarding because I lived in reality of, of, of being a vert skater. Okay, let's put it this way. I learned 720s in 1985 in Stockholm, Sweden on a backyard ramp that was next to a lake. There were two people watching me and it was like, cool, another spin. That was it. So to think that another 180 is going to move the needle of anything is absurd. Would skateboarding be where it is today without the 900? Impossible. The 900 clearly was tethered to video game. You think of that right away? What about the talent that it brought in from people who had never even heard about skateboarding until that? It has changed skateboarding and progressed it in ways that are hard to account for. I'm Dave Swift. I'm a skateboard photographer. I've been shooting skateboard photos since 1989. I got to think this. Probably okay. Falling items just fell from the heavens. Okay. On the other side is uh, Grant and I went to the X Games. We're like, oh, let's just start shooting practice and this and that. And I'm like, all right, got nothing better to do for the next few hours, whatever, we'll do that. Kind of go up to the top of the ramp and there's all these camera guys around. They're kind of like talking amongst themselves and looking at us like, what are these guys doing here? You can't be on the ramp. The guys are like, no, you can't do that. You gotta get out of here. And so where are we going? And like, that guy points down and there's like this little corral looking thing. Like there was already like seven guys in there with cameras. We're like, no, we're not going down there. What? We're out of here. So, you know, we just kind of like, that's it. We're gone. We're going. We're not, you guys aren't getting any any skateboarding magazine coverage at all. That's it. We're done. They were only allowed to shoot practice and they were always bitter about that. So I know they were not there for the, the best trick in 99. As I was walking out, I saw Brian Anderson and Brad Staba and they were like, oh, what are you doing? We're like, oh, we're out of here. We're, you know, we got kind of kicked out. He's like, oh, well, we're going to go to Hubba. Like, you want to come over and like maybe shoot photos? I don't know what we're going to do. And Grant was like, no, I'm just going to go back to the, the hotel and eat and, you know, just rest or whatever. And I was like, all right, I'll just go with these guys. By 1999, if you went to San Francisco, like Hubba was the spot. I'd gone there maybe twice before, once with Eric Costin and Mark Johnson and Deer Day. To film a trick on Hubba Hideout at the time was, it was iconic. If you were to do something that hadn't been done, it was a big deal. You know, going there with Brian, at that time you watched him skate, like he was at the height of his progression. And that was what skateboarding was to me. It was like, that was pretty important to like shoot that kind of stuff. Got back to the hotel and uh, Grant's just kind of like sitting in his chair and he's like, they got this kind of look on his face like something happened. I'm like, oh, what's up? And he's like, oh yeah, Jeff Taylor called. Did you hear? And I'm like, hear what? And he's like, I guess Tony did the 900 today. <laughs> like, I'm like, what? And I just thought it was funny. Like, really? Whitey McConaughey, who is a, a actually snowboard uh, filmer, photographer, he hit his camera in a shirt with a telephoto lens from the crowd and shot a sequence of it. That's the sequence that we got to use for audio. My boss was like a, you know, a guy in a suit. He was like, oh, what happened with the 900? We missed it, you know? We didn't get it, we got kicked out. Because we were so used to the progress of skateboarding all the time, like that was just like, oh, he did it, it's done, it's gone, that's it, that's the end. Like, I, that's how I kind of look, ah, it's all right, Grant, it'll be fine, like it's no big deal. And, you know, I guess it became a bigger deal. <laughs> I know that Grand Dave ended up going to have a hideout instead of at X Games and ended up getting all these uh, legendary NBDs with uh, Brian Anderson and Brad Stauber. So, um, I mean, I guess that was the, the silver lining. I don't know for them not being allowed in. Y2K might have been a bigger deal than the 900 at this point in time. Like everybody was, oh, what's gonna happen? January 2000 issue of Transworld. We had these little interviews with everybody that was kind of like setting the stages for the coming years. Jerry Sue, Kerry Getz, Mims, Smolik, Chad Fernandez, and Reynolds was still kind of new then. And Brian Anderson. And yeah, there's the Back Smith 180 out sequence. That day I got 
back smith, back 180, back tail shove, and back tail big spin out. Now, I don't know why the backside tail side big spin wasn't filmed. Uh, maybe somebody's battery died, you know, in their video camera. You know, of course, I did miss the 900. At the end of the day, you know, I got to shoot one of my favorite photo sequences that I've ever shot because I got kicked out of the X Games. So not only did I get a great sequence, I got paid a thousand bucks extra because Action used it as an ad. To see a trick like that, backside, tailside, big spin go down, that seemed way more important or, or would last longer in the eyes of people than a vert skater spinning a 900. I heard about Tony Hawk landing the 900. I think after Hubba walked back, I was approaching the venue and I remember how loud it was. Two or three weeks later, we were able to get Tony to go do one for us on a ramp in San Diego over a channel. So in this magazine, with Jeff Rowley on the cover, you have a 900, not on the cover, in the back of the magazine. I knew that Dave Grant and or Atiba were gonna contact me afterwards because I finally made it. It was like, now we can finally shoot it. So they just called me and they're like, hey, do a 900. Okay. The caption says, Tony, do a 900. You know, so, I mean, shot the second 900. <laughs> I did it at the uh, MTV Sports and Music Festival in Vegas. That was my second one. So after I did it there, then I had a better confidence with it and I went to Mission, back to Mission Valley and did it over the channel with Swift shooting it. Sorry Dave, that was my third one, not my second. I watched that footage and I'm like, damn, that was, that was something special. You know, like, I don't think you could have staged it any better. You know what I mean? Like, performing this, the greatest trick ever in front of, you know, millions of people worldwide. Anniversary deck, 25 years, 900, we made 200 re-releases, that's it. There will be no more. Hey, I'm honored, 25 years later, I can't believe people are still talking about this. So I'm signing these 200, these will be the last ones, and uh, they'll be available on storiedskateboarding.com.